My name is Jason Weathersby, and I work for Mozilla, as he said. Uh, I am chiefly responsible for doing evangelism associated with Firefox OS. As a quick show of hands, can I get a hand if you know what it is? All right, that's a good sign. A room, a room full of open source folks. All right, how many of you consider yourself HTML5 developers? Okay, cool. All right, so um, uh, I, the slides that I'm going to go through, they're going to be available on GitHub. I'll probably post them in the morning or, or on um, Monday at the latest. So if you want to just take down my name, search Git, GitHub for it, and you'll, you'll see my, uh, uh, my uh, it'll be listed in, uh, as an Atlanta repository. So with that said, look, I'm going to start talk, do a little bit of talking about Firefox OS. But before I do, I want, I want to give you a some of the background of why we did and why we didn't create, uh, why we did create the uh, operating system. <clears throat> First and foremost, this is not Firefox OS, and I want to state that unequivocally. And I, I took this picture in a mall when I was walking through, and I, and I went through, and 30 minutes later, I came back by the same Coke machine, and there it was, rebooting. Continuously rebooting, continuously rebooting, and you and you think sometimes I think technology is created just for technology's sake, right? And and ultimately the vendor of this poor Coke machine, he lost some sales due to uh, uh, obviously some errors. I'm not going to say that the operating system is bad for the for the for the device, but but ultimately you don't want to create technology for technology's sake. How many of you think we needed a new mobile operating system out there? And, and that's generally one of the questions I get asked most is why another mobile operating system? And there's a lot of reasons for it, and I'm going to delineate some of those in just a second here. But before I get into too much of that, I want to tell you uh, one of my coworkers, Christian Heilman, he created this math equation to tell you what Firefox OS is. And that's our math equation. <laughs> Okay, so essentially all, 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 all I'm say, we're saying here is that Firefox OS is at its heart very similar to Android, but without the Java. And we and 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 so you can take that for what that's worth. But um, everything in the operating system is written in HTML5. That's if you write an app for it, you'll write it in HTML5. If you manipulate the system. That's HTML5. And when I say HTML5, I'm being inclusive of CSS and JavaScript. All right, so this is a very uh, obscure architectural diagram, and I'm sure you can read it from where you're sitting. Not. But I, this is just a talking slide, and I'll, uh, I'll explain that there's essentially three layers that make up Firefox OS. Uh, there's the gonk layer, which is the lowest layer. That's essential, essentially a Linux kernel, much like Android. Then the level above that's Gecko. How many of you are familiar with Gecko? Please, everybody, raise your hands. All right. So uh, Gecko is Mozilla's web rendering engine, and so uh, that's the middle layer. So there is no directly on top of the kernel sits Gecko, and and, and that's different from other cell phone vendors uh, that are Android based or, uh, or iOS for that matter. When you run a web app on those phones, that you're going through an extra layer. And so we remove that layer. And then on top of Gecko is what we call Gaia. Gaia is the, the uh, user interface, what you see. I have a, a, a Firefox OS phone here. If anybody wants to look at it after the talk, come up and see me. But everything in it is HTML5. And so the only thing that's in addition to HTML5 is a set of APIs that we've added to Gaia, or to, to, to Gecko at, the, at that layer, to interact with things like the accelerometer, the camera, and the, and the different lower level APIs. APIs that you would typically have access with your Android device. Okay, so why did we create this? Well, everybody, know, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Mozilla's mission, but one of our key aspects of our mission is we want the open web to be to be available to everyone. And right now, the vast majority of in, in, uh, people in here probably carry an iPhone or an and high-end Android device. Correct? Man, so uh, that's not true in most of the world. Most of the world, there, there, there's a, uh, quite a few people still using feature phones. What we wanted to do is that's the market we wanted to go after and introduce them to the open web and it not be monopolized by one or two companies. And that's a very important uh, uh, mission for Mozilla. And it's been our mission from every product we've ever created. And it will continue to be our mission. So, and that's, to be honest with you, that's why I work there. And that's why I love working there. So. We're going to, we were targeting it, and we wanted to make hardware very, you know, give them an option for a low cost phone. This particular phone, uh, I, it's less than $100. Now, uh, so, 
and it's a smartphone, right? And and so and it's very it's a very capable smartphone. I'll show you some of the apps that we can run on it shortly. We wanted to be able to give the individual the ability to buy apps not with a uh, credit card. Wanted to be able to use their carrier billing and let it be billed directly to their carrier. Uh, uh, we wanted to make it web technologies through and throughout. We've already released in several countries. Most of them, uh, we've had a lot of uh, progress in the Latin American countries and um, quite a few in Europe as well. And actually, I've been to several of these countries already. So from that perspective, it's been a great job, if you like to travel. All right, so uh, obviously Germany, Poland. Uh, I was in Bogota, which was really great. Um, we, we have already, it's already been re uh, released to multiple carriers, Telefonica, Deutsche Telekom, and Telenor. Um, we had, I don't remember how many handsets we're up to now, but there's plenty of them. And, and we're gaining popularity in a lot of these countries. At uh, Mobile World Congress, it just happened a couple weeks ago, they, we announced that there's going to be a maker of a $25 smartphone which uh, think about the impact of that in the emerging markets. And this is very critical for Mozilla's mission. You think, well, okay, you're, you're running, if you have a uh, HTML5 web app that runs really nice on a $25 phone, what do you think it's gonna do on a, on a two or $300 piece of hardware later? <coughs> All right. So, I mean, the, the, we want to we want to we want to make sure that we get both ends of the spectrum. But we initially started with the emerging market and lower end devices. That's not to say we, that's where we want to stay. <clears throat> All right. So, what is an open web app to us? How many of you have ever developed an HTML5 app? Played it both Yeah. All right. So, uh, developing a web app for uh, that's for us. Developing an app for Firefox OS is essentially developing a HTML5 app and adding one manifest file to it. And this is what a typical one looks like. It's a JSON formatted file that just gives a description of uh, the app, the developer, and, and some things like icons. Later on in the presentation, I'm going to show some code snippets. Don't let it make you afraid or anything like that, because I'll go through them fairly quickly. And there's example, I'll point you to places that you can get further details online. But uh, in fact, right below there, you'll see where it says app manifest. It, it's a link to a, a more detailed a description of the manifest file and what you can put in it. But some of the things that you'll have to put in it later are permissions, and I'll explain what those are as we go along. All right, so that's essentially it. And I've literally had web app developers come up to me and said, hey, I wrapped it in a uh, uh, manifest, dumped it on the phone, and I was working inside of an hour. And that is one huge advantage that HTML5 to me is just so much simpler to develop in than writing Objective-C or writing in Java. So that's my personal opinion. You may not agree with that, but that's my personal opinion. All right. So what kind of apps can you have? There's three types of apps that we that we uh, uh, delineate. There's hosted apps. That's an app that sits on your server, and all you do is provide a manifest for it, and the phone goes out, retrieves the app, and uh, runs the app locally. You make a change to it, the change comes to the phone. If you uh, and then and but the, the drawback for hosted apps is your permission level is is reduced. We're not going to give you access to certain APIs if it's sitting on your website. The second type of app is called a privileged app, and that what those are are apps that you take, zip them up with the manifest file, submit it to our marketplace. And, uh, and it gets validated by the marketplace team, and it's actually pushed down to the phone. And it, and it supports things like, it, all of these also support things like offline cache, so when the user's not connected and things like that. And those are all good things to know, considering that anytime you hit, uh, hit, a, a hit, hit the uh, uh, internet, there's gonna be a data charge associated with, for the individual, right? So you gotta be c uh, conscious of that. And the last, and, it, and privileged apps can have, actually have privileges to do certain things like uh, uh, access the contacts API or something like that. So certified apps are the lowest one on the list, and those are technically at the current moment only uh, implemented by Mozilla and our partners. Now that's not to say that's where they'll always stay, but that's where they're at today. <clears throat> All right. Um, most people are very familiar with going to the marketplaces of uh, other uh, cell phone providers and you download your app, right? Well, with Mozilla apps, with Firefox OS apps, they don't have to be installed from our marketplace. They can be installed on your website. It, this little script here, this piece of uh, JavaScript snippet, that basically just points to a manifest URL. And you put this code on your server, add the uh, uh, header type, and you can install 
directly from your web, uh, web server, which I think is a nice feature to have. All right, but you can also install from our marketplace, and that's what it looks like. Ain't it pretty? Uh, so, um, and by the way, just so you know, our marketplace is open source as well, so um, and everything we do is open source. Okay, that's, um, I'm going to give you a couple screenshots because you may not be able to see them that well. We go through. This is just a home screen of my, uh, this phone here. Okay, that's no big deal. There's the settings app. You're probably familiar with seeing something similar to that. Uh, there's my email. Um, calendar. These are just basic core apps that come. And these are all HTML5. And in fact, you can get the source code for any one of these and look at it. There's a clock. That's impressive, right? I know this is not as impressive as this one. It's our FM radio app. So, okay. And then there's the marketplace app. So for you know searching the marketplace with on your while you're on your phone. All right. There's we use here maps for map for mapping and things like that. Here's some of the social apps. Of course, you can't have a social app without having Twitter, Facebook. Uh, I just put Buzzfeed in there. Message me. Um, this is a new app that just, we just featured. It's called Roar Mix, and it gives you some uh, pretty cool uh, videos. And there's YouTube. All right, then we can also do games, because let's be honest with ourselves, that's why we all carry smartphones, right? And, uh, i got to have me another Flappy Bird. So uh, not only does it do that, but we also support WebGL. Now, how many of you know what WebGL is? Okay, so it's based on OpenGL, and it's web rendering 3D. And on, the, on these phones, this particular phone, when we released our first edition, I was getting two frames a second with WebGL. And it, it's very computation expensive. But now, on the latest release, I'm, I'm getting like 35 to 40 frames a second for WebGL demo, which is, which is pretty substantial for a HTML5-based phone that can make some very, very cool-looking apps. All right, <clears throat> this is a, I'm gonna drop some bombs. I'll show, maybe show that. Does anybody know what game that is? Cut the rope. Yeah, okay. All right, this is another Flappy Bird type game here where a, 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 a very smart developer, one of our first games put in from our um, a Poland release. And there's, yeah. And you can't have games without having a solitaire, right? All right, so. Yeah, yeah. I can't say it though. All right, so. Um, <clears throat> Let me show you a couple of these, what these look like. And what you're seeing in here is actually just a web page that I've opened up by selecting tools, web developer, and there's something called App Manager. And App Manager just allows me to manipulate and install apps on a connected phone and debug them. And I'm going to show you a little bit of that later on. But I can start our Firefox OS simulator like this. I have actually two versions of the simulator installed. If you look down at the bottom, you can see it. All right, so I'm going to start the simulator. Everyone see that? That's, that's my simulator for my phone. I'll give you an example. Here's a... And I'm not very good at it. All right, so... And you would think as much time as I spent on the road, I would be very good at this. But uh, here's a physics demo. I'll give you... Pretty cool. All right, um... Uh, let me show you. An, here's a, I knew I was going to do that. I should have told you, preface this with, a, this is a, uh, a fairly unstable version of the simulator that I'm currently running. I'm going to stop it and start it. Okay. Here was that, here's that crystal skull demo that you saw. Can you see, you guys see that? Okay. Man. <laughs> okay, somebody liked it. <laughs> all right, um, all right. So here's a here's another game. I'm gonna give some more details on this game. So, and these are and to, and to be honest with you, uh, all of those those particular games run at very high frame rates, even on this device. And this is considered one of the lowest end devices we have. But I, I found it a very good developer phone. So, all right, so it died on me again. So let me quit this, and then I'm going to go back to the presentation. I'm going to come back into App Manager in a little bit and show you how you would debug an app in that, if anyone's interested in that. All right, so I'm going to talk 
I'm going to try to go through this quick because there's some new features in Firefox, the browser that I want to talk about later as well. All right, so web APIs. These are the, remember when I told you in the, the Gecko layer we added some web APIs? These are all APIs that we've presented before standards boards that we're trying to make standard HTML uh, 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 APIs. And what they're, they're implemented in our Gecko layer and they enable functionality on the phone. Uh, these are, I'll, I'll read every line of this to you right now. Um, this, uh, this is only put here as for illustrative purposes, but there's the wiki link to tell you about every one of the APIs. For example, if you want to uh, be able to handle the vibration API, you want to make the phone vibrate, there's a link to tell you basically how to do that. And so if you just go web API wiki and, and type my, my Mozilla web API wiki in Google, you'll find that page, but, or you can just download my presentation. All right, so I told you there's three types of apps. Well, there's three types of permission. That's essentially three types of permission levels. These are the APIs that if, you're, if the app's sitting on your site or is what we call the unprivileged packaged app and put on the phone, these are the APIs that you can get access to. For example, screen, uh, the screen orientation, vibration, you want to get geolocation. Uh, network information, battery status, and a, a very important one that I know a lot of you will probably have some interest in is push API, which is push notifications from a server to the phone. And that's when the app is minimized or, 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 not, or, or is actually not started. The system will wake the app up and notify it that it's got a push. And we don't do push like other uh, vendors do because we don't actually push the data. We push a version of a message, then you go out, it's the responsibility of the app to go out and pull the data down on what it needs. And that's, there's, those are security reasons we do that. Things like that. Okay. Um, we also have uh, sensor, you can ambient light sensor, proximity sensor, or um, things like that. So those are the different things that we can do. You can do using a standard hosted app. I'm going to show you just a few quick snippets of JavaScript, and I hope that don't offend anybody. Um, <clears throat> but so here's an example of how to get the uh, uh, the battery level, and you can see where it's navigator.battery. We get the battery object, we get its, uh, we can get its charge time, its discharge time, and you can add an event listener. You see down at the bottom, B dot add event listener for level change, charging time, things like that. So it's pretty nice, and you can put a little graphic behind it. And by the way, every API that you're going to see here is already wrapped up in a sample app that you can download and start playing with today, and I'll show you that app as well. All right, geolocation. I put this screenshot up here for a reason. Remember when I told you that in the manifest you may have to have permissions for certain features? Well, in this particular case, I'm getting the geolocation of someone. So there's a permission that I have to have in my manifest down there. And then you have to uh, specify what will happen. The system will automatically prompt the user, hey, this app wants to get your geolocation. Are you willing to share it? So those are security reasons that you'll see those kind of things in there. We got the notification API. You see this little box up here on top? That's just a little pop-up. If you want to uh, pop that up and your app's minimized, there's a way to do that. There's a permission prompt down at the bottom in order to allow it to show those notifications. Uh, otherwise, the user is prompted, much like geolocation, saying this app wants to do notifications. Uh, web payments. Um, all right, so um, everybody, that's what everybody always wants to know is, hey, how do I make money doing this? Right? No, it's volume, it's volume, it's volume. Um, uh, so um, the way we, you, the way we're, we're handling. Uh, uh, you know, monetizing uh, Firefox OS from a developer standpoint is essentially three ways. You can sell your app in the marketplace as a paid app, and I put a link down at the bottom for validating a receipt, and that's a very essential part if you have a paid app to make sure that the user hasn't returned your app, because you can do that. So validating, there's a little bit of JavaScript associated with verifying that they actually have a valid receipt on their phone. We also support uh, in-app payments. So you want to add an extra level to whizbang wahoo, you know, I mean, so uh, that, that's an, an in-app payment. And we have the JavaScript for that. And matter of fact, that snippet up there is essentially all you do is Mozilla uh, Navigator.MozPay. And you pass a, what we call a JWT, which is a, a, a JSON web token, and it's, you create this based on a secret key that the marketplace will give you. And you pass that, uh, when you make that call, it'll go to the marketplace and it'll present a UI for the user to pay for it. And then once it returns on its success on all of our API calls virtually, you'll see an own success and an own error. And in this case, you just 
So in order to actually uh, purchase something, it's just that one, essentially that one line. Make sense? Everybody do like this. Yeah. Okay, great. Even if it doesn't. Oh, one other quick thing on that. Um, uh, uh, interactive ads. Uh, uh, if you want to put ads on your, right now, the one, the one that we uh, mo are seeing most common in uh, Firefox OS is interactive. If you, I know we're also at, uh, proving some with uh, Google AdSense too. So if you, if you're putting ads in your, in your uh, apps. All right, this technically isn't a web API, and you may have even used this code before, but I have to put it in every one of the presentations because we get asked it all the time. It's when my app gets minimized, and all you do to minimize an app is push the home button and hold it. The app will minimize, and you have the option to swipe to kill it, or just hit the little X button, or tap it to bring it back open. Um, <clears throat> This code, will, you need to add this code to your uh, to your app so you can tell when that those events are occurring. Make sense? All right, that, that's essentially some of the uh, 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 brief overview of some of the hosted APIs. On the privileged APIs, these are things you can only do if you get it approved by the marketplace, put it in a zip file, and it gets pushed to the user's phone. And right now, the ones that we have support for on the privileged API is device storage API, which is I want to write to the pictures, I want to write to the SD card, I want to write to the gallery, you know, um, to the uh, uh, music folder. So those are all things, all those are, that's what the device storage API was. The one caveat here is when, the only thing that you have to add to your manifest to make it privileged is to put that type privileged in that, that JSON file that I originally showed you. All right, so here's a couple examples. All right, I want to create a new contact. I've used the navigator.mozcontacts uh, 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 method or object. And so, and you get a success and a failure if that works. And this is the permission that you need to have in the bottom of your manifest file to actually do that. I want to access the contacts. I want to give them read-write. All right. Here's the device storage one I was talking about, writing to the SD card. In this particular case, this one is uh, somebody wanted a V card written out of the contacts and put it on an SD card so they could take it somewhere else. So I wrote a real quick example of how to do that. And all I'm doing is creating a new blob, setting a type, and uh, passing the information that I'd had in a previous variable. And I store it in this test folder. And it writes it to the SD card. And you notice that for every place you want to write on the device, you have to specify it in the manifest as a permission. Starting to see a pattern here? Yeah, okay. And then uh, if, I don't know if you've used cross-domain XML HTTP requests, but this is how you would go about doing it. It has an own, uh, own error here. You send the request and you point to the, in this case it's just reading a readme file from another URL and processing the changes. Actually, it's not processing now. It's not doing anything. But <laughs> so, and you need to have system XHR in your in your manifest. All right, certified apps. Um, we put this in here to tell you everything you cannot use. Okay, how's that for helpful, right? Um, so uh, this particular, th the reason I put these in here is because hopefully we've been trying to get some of these opened up. Does anybody notice any API in there that may cause them a little contention because they don't have access to it? Well, the camera API may be one, right? That's a little annoying. So. Uh, and those, these are the things, actually, we have WebRTC coming to the phone yeah, very soon. I don't, I don't have a date on it yet, but very, very soon. All right, so how do, I, how do I get access to these things if I'm not a certified app? Well, that's where the next thing steps into play. This is technically can be used at a hosted level. It doesn't have to be privileged. It's called Web Activities. Anybody familiar with, uh, like, Android Intents? All right, well, basically, the, whole, the, the, the idea is here is if I have an app, I can, my app can go out and ask other apps to fulfill a request. Give you an example. If you want to get a picture, well, if you're on a, most phones, it's going to present you a list of apps that supply pictures, right? Well, that's what we call a web activity. Uh, one app, ask another app to fulfill some kind of function. And what, the reason that adds the extra level of permission is because you have to physically, the operator has to physically do the operation. And that's where we get around some of the privilege problems. And these, these are things like, oh, I want a browse request. That means I want to open up the browser. Most likely, the only app that will be able to handle that is the browser. Uh, may want to dial a phone number. The only app that most likely will handle that is the dialer. But that's not doesn't have to be. It can be other ones. If you want to do a, get a picture, there's plenty of places you can get it from, right? 
So th th those are technically web activities. If you want to write a web activity yourself, meaning you supply some function to another app, you, uh, you, you add this uh, section of, uh, uh, to your JSON, uh, man your, web app manif your manifest web app file. And all of, in this particular case, this activity says, my app is going to handle picture, uh, somebody picking images of all types. That's all this says. And you can see, this is the pick operation. That this is what I want to do. This is the filters are, Im uh, this is redundant, but all images, right? So when anybody in this, in, on the operating system asks for an image, they're going to be presented with your app. And uh, this just basically tells you you want to do it inline and where in your code handles that activity. And then the code that actually does do the activity for the receiver part here is you create a, me a message handler, set it to activity, and then in this case, I'm looking for a pick. At Somebody has asked for a pick, and then I can just return a picture. On the sender side, if you want to get a picture, then you would do it like this. This is new Moz activity, and you will see this throughout our examples because we use this uh, infrastructure heavily. Uh, uh, new Moz activity pick, and I am interested in type, data of type image, JPEG. And notice right here, this is the list of apps that provide JPEGs. And then once I get the response back from that, I handle that. In this case, it's getting back a blob. I just punch the blob into the DOM. All right, want to dial a phone number. We do not d allow you to get the dialer API because that's very dangerous, right, to give an app. Can you imagine th the chaos? So, so what we do is we allow you to pre-populate the dialer with a number, and then the user has to hit the send button. Same with contacts. They, they, have, to actually have, the, they actually have to hit done on it to save the contact, but it'll be pre-populated. New miles activity, data, web contacts. All right, now that said, this is all for Firefox OS, right? No, not exactly. Um, <clears throat> all the APIs that we have implemented in our Firefox OS uh, operating system, we are trying to get implemented in, in the Firefox for Android as well. And, and so we're, in the, we're still in the process of doing that, but that's where we're going. In addition to that, this just released last week. It's, it's, we call it the APK Factory, and what it does is if you have an app in the Firefox OS marketplace and someone with an Android phone goes to it and they have, I think it's version 29 of Firefox for Android, it, they can download an app from the Firefox OS marketplace and it will automatically install as a app and run on Android. And, and, and what I mean that is not a, a bookmark to a web page on the home screen of your Android device. It's a managed app. You can uninstall it and do all the fun things you can do with managed apps on an Android. And if you'll see here, this is actually the simulator. The one on the right's the Android simulator. The one on the left's the Firefox OS simulator. I, I, I put my sample app on both of them, the, the little bumper game. Now, um, I, w I will state in all honesty, this is still uh, 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 still a little rough around the edges, and I ran this and on the simulator and it didn't work, but it runs on the phone. So, so running the app in the simulator didn't work. Though. We have an open bug for that. We're trying to get it fixed. So that's one way you can get the app on there. Well, what if you want to what we call sideload it, right? If you want to connect up to the, the phone and sideload it. You can actually make a request to the marketplace just using curl or wget and say, give me the APK for this app. And it will download, you can download APK and then use the simulator and install the app that way if you're locally connected. In this case, I'm just showing uh, Mac or Linux and showing installing, actually insta installing Firefox for Android and, and installing my sample app that you saw in the previous slide. That's a nice good blob of text for a, a presentation, right? This isn't my first time presenting, I promise you. <laughs> All right, so a couple, um, a couple other notes. On, I want to talk to you about framework generators. We have PhoneGap support now. Anybody familiar with PhoneGap? All right, so we got, uh, and with the 3.4 release, we are now um, uh, part of the uh, Cordova um, environment, and, and actually in PhoneGap as well. Cordova is nothing more than the uh, open source variant of PhoneGap. It's more than that, but, but in this particular, for, for, for this purpose. Uh, yes, it is, it is in PhoneGap 3.4. 
So it got released a couple of week, a week or two after it came out on Cordova. All right, and the way, all those APIs you heard me talk about, those are plugins. The, the way Cordova implements those, or PhoneGap, is through plugins. And there are hundreds of plugins out there. But the ones that are sponsored by the project, those are the ones that are there. You know, you got a camera plugin, a compass plugin, things like that. Well, we have a set of those plugins. Basically, we've modified those plugins to include Firefox OS support, which is really nice because Cordova is HTML5. What is Firefox OS? HTML5, right? So it was, it's not like it, we, we had to do a, a huge amount of work in order to make that happen, right? Um, there was some work. Uh, here's a GitHub example. I wrote this example when we released on Cordova. Um, there's a, just a, it's, as you can tell, it's not exactly beautiful. Um, but I'm, I, don't, I don't have a very good aesthetic eye. So uh, 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 we, these are the plugins that we currently implement in the Cordova build. Uh, notification, compass, accelerometer, camera, contacts, and geolocation. And you can see that, that actually the middle one's a WebGL sample. If anybody wants to take a look at it, I took it from Google Experiments and put it on my phone. And, it, and this app runs very nice on my phone. OK? Um, to install Cordova, that's just the commands to install Cordova and to create a Firefox OS project. You just add uh, where it says add Firefox, Cordova platform, add Firefox. That adds our plugins, our, our, our platform. And then you add specific plugins as you need them. The reason for this is to reduce the amount of space, right? If you don't need geolocation, then why have all that chunked code thrown over there, right? So that's the reason they break it up into nice, even function, uh, nice functions, or nice plugins. So when you run Cordova Prepare Firefox OS, it automatically will put the app in a format that can be pushed to the phone. Okay. One other one I'll tell you about another framework that we just we just actually got this one uh, working is an engine called Flambe, and I'm not going to get into it too much. It's based on a language called Hacks which is more or less Java-esque, uh, came, came out of the uh, action script world. It's used by Nickelodeon to write most of their, uh, their well, in the future it'll be used by most of their games, I believe. Um, they, it has things like ex, uh, accelerometer access, as, asset loading, physics, a physics library, touch support, scene management, and things like that. And I showed, I think I showed all three of those games earlier on the simulator. All of those were developed with it. But what it does is it takes that language, you run it through this framework, and it generates an HTML5 app for Firefox OS that you just push to the phone. If you're familiar with JS Fiddle, you can, we got quick links to basically generate a manifest file, and, and, and you can turn your JS Fiddle project straight into a Firefox OS project. Okay. All right. Some of the tools I want to talk about, and I'm going to actually show this one real quick, and I want to get through it and make sure I have enough time. This is the App Manager, and, and I started to show you this earlier. To install it, we have a website for installing it, and uh, you need the simulator. The App Manager itself is already part of Firefox, but uh, to install the App Manager, you need to install uh, two plugins. And one of them is the ADB helper, and one of them, you can install. I have all three of them installed, you, so you can pick which simulator you want to use. But I'm going to show you what that looks like real quick. All right, here's the app manager. Remember I told you there was a, a JSON manifest file? You can edit it right in the web page here. Um, we have the concept of packaged and hosted apps. I can add those just hitting the plus button and then add my uh, directory containing my manifest or point it to a URL with the manifest. These are a set of apps that I've, that I've played with. All right. I can start the simulator just by clicking the Start Simulator, and I'm going to click 1.3, and I'll probably have to start it, restart it multiple times here, but I'm going to show you a couple things. Remember I told you all those APIs, we had a, a sample app that you can use. This is, Robert Nyman wrote this, and this is the Firefox OS boiler, uh, boilerplate uh, app. And it, it's uh, just a bunch of buttons with different functionalities, showing you each of the APIs. So if I hit Pick Image, I'm going to pick an image from my gallery, it done. That was a Mozilla activity. You just saw an action. All right. Now that said, let's do a little bit of uh, debugging on it. These are the developer tools that are associated with the App Console, uh, App Manager, and we have other developer tools that it, are, are the, is, is a superset of this list that I'll maybe get to before if I have time. But let's take a look at the console. Console is just going to give me my logs, any errors, things like that. But I can also interact with the JavaScript context by saying like. Uh, 
alert. Hello. Please tell me I spelled that right. All right, you notice it shows up on my simulator. If I had my phone plugged in, it will show up on my phone. So everything you see me do here will, I, I don't, that same demo can be done on the phone. I just didn't think we could get the camera set up on it. All right, so that said, I can also go to the what we call the inspector. This is the HTML5, I mean, HTML inspector, and it allows me to interrogate my HTML, my CSS. I, if I ch choose this element selector, I can click on it, and then I can, you know, do things like click on a certain area, and it takes me directly to the HTML5. For, I mean, HTML for that, right? I can also go the other way. If I just move it around, do you notice how? The, can you see the red but the red box is showing up around the buttons and stuff? All right, so. Yeah, now, so if I click on web activities here, I can do things like, okay, let me come over to the CSS, and I'm going to add font color, and I'm going to say red. Can anybody tell me what I've done wrong? There you go. Yeah, somebody's paying attention to me. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and I'm actually very lousy at CSS, so I would, I absolutely made this mistake on, uh, on purpose this time, but when I originally did, I did not. So, if I change the color, do you see what happened in my uh, simulator? Yeah. Pretty cool, right? I can go into my JavaScript debugger. Oh, by the way, on the inspector, we also have the actual computed styles, and you can look at the boxing model around the, it, it, whatever app you got set, padding and things like that. But if I go to the debugger, here's, uh, I can debug my JavaScript associated with the app. These are all the JavaScript files located. Loaded, loaded. This, you can also get a call stack when you ne have nested calls. And you can do things like black boxing, uh, which means if I, most people use minified uh, J JavaScript files, you don't necessarily want a single step through them. So you just black box them and it won't step into them. You can also, um, uh, pr you, can, you can, what they call pretty it, and make it uh, 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 more, le um, more readable and, and easier to debug through as well. So, but that said, I'll give you an example of this. Uh, I'm going to uh, load up, this is the main uh, JavaScript file for this app. And if I look at that pick image, this is the button here. There's its own click event. If I just put a uh, breakpoint there and then I click pick image, it stops. All right? You go, okay, that's great. I can uh, then uh, step into, step over, and step out of and walk through that. Now, I'm not going to do that yet because I want to show you this. Over on this right side are my, my variables, my global, my scoped variables from function, global, and I can just look at, by clicking on those, I can look at any one of those objects. Okay? I can also select the events tab and go, okay, let me, I want to catch any time something's clicked. So if I click on the uh, click event, and then remove that breakpoint, and let's let that play out. I'll cancel that. All right, let's try it again. Notice it stopped at the same location, and that's because I'm trapping the event. <clears throat> and then uh, also, there's a, quite a few settings in here. You can catch up, pause on exceptions. You, we support source map, so if you do have a minified file, in fact, this actually supported source file, source map files for a whole, an entirely different language than in that one of those previous examples I showed you. So that's essentially the quick thing on, on the debugger piece. Um, let me show you another couple things here. What's pretty cool about it is there's a setting in the preference on the phone that you can set that allow you to actually uh, uh, debug the system apps. So, for example, if I go to, well, let's see. These are all my apps that are installed, by the way. I should have probably t said that. I can click on debug my home screen. All right. So here's my, if I go to my inspector, this is all my HTML for that home screen. Let's hit that selector. And did I not get it? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the style editor, and I'm going to make a few changes to it. All right. So I'm going to use a transform uh, a CSS statement. You see what happened on my simulator? Now keep in mind, if I, if, if I had that connected to my phone, that's exactly what would be happening on my phone as well. How about this for a user interface? Any UI experts in the, in the, in the room? Would that, would that pass mustard? I don't think so. But that's my, those are my typical apps, by the way. 
Yeah, that is. Ship it. Ship it. All right. All right, so let me show you one other quick thing while I'm here. This has the permissions tab, and it'll tell you. I told you there's three levels of apps. These will tell you all the permissions and what level your app needs to be in order to get access to that device. If I select this, I wanna, this is a, a one I was using. I wanted to profile the difference between an off-screen canvas and a uh, using uh, just using geometry draws. So I I wrote this little app, and you can see the run button does nothing, right? So I ship that as well. So if I come down here, I got this function entitled uh, draw ball, and it does nothing, right? So if I go over to my scratch pad, which allows me to interact with the JavaScript context and do a little bit more, a few more things. For example, I can type window and then hit the inspect button, and my window object comes up there in the right, and then I can dig through it and interrogate it. If I do, uh, let's say, 2 plus 5, oh, sorry about that. 2 plus 5, and then I highlight that. I can, the display button, which evaluates an object and gives you the result back in a comment. But the, to me, the one of the most powerful things is doing, being able to do this. I just, I, I included a function called draw ball here. Now, if I run this code here, it adds it to my JavaScript context. All right? Now, that was one of my draw methods. That one actually did the uh, basic geometry draw. And then my second one is an off-screen canvas. I'm going to run that. The same, func uh, same function name, I run that. It just replaces what I just had. Look at there. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, by the way, I should have said this. In the debugger, if I, mm, let me just put a breakpoint here, and I run that code again, I can modify my variables as well. So, like, here's the ball radius. Let's do 24. Remove that breakpoint and play it out. So it's pretty, it's, it's, we, so the, uh, the gist of this to tell you is the debugging tools that we have are getting, are getting a lot better. And I'm going to explain a couple more of them at, back in the presentation. Okay. So uh, a couple of things to get you, help get you started. We have style guidelines. We, there's a lot of starter type projects, but this one in particular is a very good one because it has most of the components that you're going to, or has several components that you'll use in most projects. Uh, let me show you those real quick, actually. So this is a sample app that uses it. Yeah. Maybe I won't show you. All righty. Let me try that one more time real quick. All right, so these are a set of uh, web components based on XTag that do things like, oh, I want to be able to flip up something. Uh, I want to, everybody needs a calendar object, right? And then uh, things like different slider looks and things like that, different check boxes, radios, and things like that. So that's what the Brick project is all about. And uh, a lot of good people are working on it, trying to make it one of the best. It's, it's very performant, too. So. There's the Firefox OS boilerplate app I showed you. It's got virtually every API that we support implemented. I'm not sure it's everyone, but it's close. Okay, a couple up new new features that are already in the Dev Tools. That if you haven't used Dev Tools, if you've been a Firebug user, please at least give Dev Tools a try because they have gotten a, a lot better over the last year and are continuing to get better. The guys that are working on it are, are doing a fantastic job. They recently added uh, a shader editor support. So if you're a WebGL guy and you want to modify the programs for the fragment shaders, um, you can turn the programs on and off, things like that, and and, and visualize what those programs are actually doing for the uh, uh, vertex shader and fragment shader, shaders. Uh, this one just got released, I want to say, this week. And so you have to get the nightly to get this. But this is a the Canvas debugger. And it allows, if you use request animation frame in your HTML to like generate a picture uh, animation frame, you can actually trap that animation frame. And then it'll give you every draw operation and take a screenshot of it and dump it along the bottom. You see along the bottom where the picture is composed of different draw operations? Boom, 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 till you get your old, the end of your picture. And it allows you to see what calls and step through it and, 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 and manipulate it. And to me, that's a pretty, if you're into, if you're into games and things like that. That's just a very cool thing to have. One other uh, new thing that we've done is new network uh, look. 
So you get more detailed information on network information. Uh, this is actually one of the, uh, the graphs that tell you, it, it basically, when you run the tool with this, it'll run the web page that you're asking for twice. Once without cache and once with cache. And then you get an idea of what's cached on your website and the, and the, and the time constraints that it's taking to load it. And it's very helpful, for, especially in the mobile, when you're going to be writing a site that's going to be heavy on, on downloads. Uh, this is this is actually already in Firefox OS version 1.4. It's just basically uh, uh, it, it allows you to visualize uh, what they call jank and reflow, which is basically a vi event loop lag. And in this particular example, there's quite a bit of input lag. But all that does is tell you how to uh, uh, help you optimize when you're making synchronous type calls that are blocking the event loop, and 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 so it would suggest to you that you maybe need to do a little bit of optimization in that. Okay, so if you want some more information, the Developer Hub is a great place to start to get you started if you want to develop Firefox OS apps. And if you have an HTML5 app that you think that you'd like to see on Firefox OS, please contact me because I would love to talk to you about it. We have a program called Phones for Apps where we we try to we'll send you out a phone if if if, if it, well the, the, a committee looks at it if you app that if it's an app that they want to pursue you on they'll uh, reach out to you and send you a phone to get you started and things like that. Um, the Hacks blog, I write a lot of articles on it. Uh, Robert Nyman is the editor for it. Most of our, our team is on that uh, blog daily. And then there's the Firefox OS wiki. Okay. And I believe that's all I have for today. Did anybody want to ask any questions? So. Uh, that's a great question. You can get a. <laughs> I, and I thought I was going to get away with no, asking that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the phones are public. Are, are public. You can get them on eBay now, but um, and when there's an eBay store for buying like the ZTE Open. Um, publicly, we have not released a Firefox OS phone in the United States. That will be coming. Just not. It's, I, I think well, uh, we're we're allowed to say right now that it won't be 2014. But that doesn't mean you can't get uh, a phone. Uh, uh, there's plenty of phones to be had. And in addition to that, the, there is a marketplace out there for them. Just, just keep in mind that a lot of them are be Spanish-speaking countries, so if you write an app, it's a good idea to uh, localize. And I have an article on Hacksblog if you're interested in localization to get you started. And, we, and actually, the boilerplate app is localized, so I think they're using Trans Effect on that. So you can take a look at that and actually use that as your template. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that that's a that's a that's a great question, and and I don't have an answer for that. Uh, I, I can tell you right now, as of now, there's been no talk of that, and that's because the iPhone's fairly restrictive, right? I mean, we, 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 just so you know, we, 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 we have people flashing their Samsungs, their S2s. I don't know if an, I think an S3 has been flashed before, but nobody's tried. I don't think anybody's tried to flash an iPhone. That would sound like, I think there's a self-destruct button in it if that happens. So, just kidding. So, any other questions? Apps like Twitter and Facebook create lines of companies? Yeah, absolutely. I should have shown that. that there, I had Facebook. I did show it. Facebook and Twitter are already on there. No, but they're made by Facebook and Twitter. Yes. Um, Fire, we are in the process of making the APIs work on Firefox for Android. Now, what I said is the Firefox OS apps can already be downloaded if you have, I think it's version 29 of Fennec. Um, you can download the app and it'll, uh, from the Firefox OS marketplace and it will run as long as you have the Firefox OS browser installed on it as well. Okay, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Thank you.